Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey, and this is number 52 in my IDCSE exam questions series. And this is sine and cosine rule. If you do find it useful, please do like the video and let's get into the maths. Okay, question number one is a straightforward question where you need to find this side. I'm going to call it little a because then I can label the angle capital A. And I've got the two sides either side the angle, so this is going to be the cosine rule. So I can write that a squared is equal to the two um, opposite sides, or sorry, the two uh, other sides, squared minus two lots of the other two sides multiplied together, multiplied by cosine of 36. So we go to our calculator and we do 2. Point uh, sorry, 26.3 squared plus 17.8 squared minus 2 times 26.3 times 17.8 times cosine of 36 close brackets equals 251. We write that down so the examiner knows what we're doing and then we square root that to get our value and we press square root answer and it's 15.8 bosh okay next question we are looking for the angle x we have its opposite side but we don't have a angle and its opposite side given to us and if we don't have that then it means we use the cosine rule so we're going to use the cosine rule to work out a and i'll call this one the angle opposite and I will do that by doing a squared is equal to, again, 4.1 squared plus 5.3 squared minus 2 times 4.1 times 5.3 times cosine of 110. I'll put that into my calculator. Press equals, I'll square root the answer, and I'll get 7.7. .7. So now this is 7.7. .7. So now I do have an angle and its opposite pair, which means I can use the sine rule. Just right here, a is equal to 7.7. .7. So using the sine rule, this tells me the sine rule states that sine of the angle over its opposite side, 5.3, is equal to sine of another pair, again, over its opposite side. Okay, I can rearrange this by multiplying both sides by 5.3. So I get 5.3 times by sine of 110 over 7.7. .7. So we put that into our calculator, 5.3 multiplied by... Um, sine of 110 close brackets over the last answer is better than writing 7.7 .7, and that equals 0 0.644 so sine x equals 0 0.644 so therefore x is equal to inverse sine of 0 0.44 and we press shift sine of that last answer equals and it's 40.1 is our angle. Okay, next question, we've got a triangle with no diagram. How stingy. And it says work out the size of the largest angle. So if I were to draw this, let's call this side the largest side 14. And then we've got um, eight, uh, 10 there. And let's say 8 here then the largest angle will be the one opposite the largest side. Because if you think about it, 14 is the largest side, so it spreads the other two sides out the furthest. So this is going to be the longest side. So I'm going to call that one capital A. This one little a, which means these two could be B and C. Okay, now you're not given the uh, cosine rule for angles. You are given the cosine rule for a side, which looks like this. So what I would do would be to take this big chunk here, 
and add it to the other side and then take um, a squared and subtract it to this side and that will give you 2bc cosine capital A is equal to b squared plus c squared minus a squared and then you can get cosine A by dividing both sides by 2bc so now I can sub those values in so I get cosine of A is equal to 10 squared plus 8 squared minus 14 squared all over 2 times 10 times 8. So in my calculator I'll press the fraction button first. I'll do 10 squared plus 8 squared minus 14 squared all over 2 times 10 times 8. And I'll get minus 0 0.2. and then I will work out A by doing the inverse cosine of that value so I'll do shift cos of the answer and I will get 101.5 perfect okay next question I'm asked to find the area of the whole quadrilateral so first one to spot is you've got a triangle here with two angles, which means straight away you can work out the third uh, by taking away 97 and 58 from 180 to get 25. Um, so now that's helpful because you have a... Um, um, actually, it's not that helpful. <laughs> but you've got a, you've got a pair here, um, which is helpful. It means you can use the sign rule, which means from... Here, I can work out this side, which is going to be very helpful because that's in both triangles. Okay, yeah, we got there in the end. Actually. Let's call that x. So x over sine 97 is equal to 9.3 over sine of 58. So x is equal to... On our calculators, we would do uh, 9.3 over... Uh, sine 58 and then we would need to multiply that by uh, sine 97 right so that gives me 10.88 okay now I know 10.88 I can work out the area of both triangles uh, because all you need to work out the area of, of a triangle is uh, two sides and the angle in between them. Ah, that 25 was useful. So that's a half times 9.3 times 10.88 times by sine of 25. That's the formula which is given in your formula sheet. So we will do a half times 9.3 times by the previous answer times by sine of 25. And this will give us 21.4 or 21.39. And then let's look at the other um, triangle. Well, we've got two sides and we have an angle in between them. So we can do the same thing and we can work out the area of that triangle. So that one is 11.2 times 10.88 times by sine of 47. So we do 0 0.5 times 11.2 times by 10.88 times by sine of 47. And this gives us 44.56. So we add that to our 21.39 to get the total area of A, B, C, D. And that's equal to 65.9. Okay, we've got another question here, but this time you're given the area of A, C, D. So in here is 250. So we can use the fact that you need two sides and an angle in between to work out the area. So let's call this one X. So the area formula will be 250 is equal to 1 half multiplied by x multiplied by 26 times by sine of 39 
Okay, so uh, in order to work out x, I will need to, uh, well, first what I can do is a half times by 26 is 13. So I'll divide by 13 and sine 39. So it'll be 250 over 13 sine 39. So I'll do 250 over 13 sine of 39. And that will give me 30.56. So that's my value for x, 30.56. And I need to work out the area of the quadrilateral. Well, at the moment, on the left side, I've only got one um, side. I need two sides. Um, so what I can do is I can use the sine rule because we have a side and we have its opposite pair angle. So I can use that to work out... Um, this side here which is opposite this angle here so let's call this one uh, y and i can say that y over sine 47 is equal to the pair that i have which is free uh, sorry 30.56 over sine of 95 and then i can work out y on my calculator by doing um, this answer over sine of 95 and then multiplied, so bring the sine 47 up to the other side and that will give me y which is 22.43 okay so 22.43 and now I can work out a area as long as I have two sides and the angle in between them and the angle in between them I can work out because I know two of the other angles in that triangle so I can take them away from 180 to leave me 38 up here so the area of this triangle ABC is equal to one half times by the two sides opposite one another times by sine of the angle in between them so I will do 0 0.5 times by 22.43 uh, times by 30.56 times by sine of 38 and I'll get an, an area of 211 so the total area of quadrilateral A, B, C is 211 plus 250 which is 461 perfect okay tricky question alert we're asked to work out the perimeter of the triangle and it says that given that x is equal to y minus 1 find the value of k um, well if x is equal to y minus 1, then y is equal to x plus 1. And I could write that over here as x plus 1. And now I have one angle. And I have an expression, at least, for each of the sides. So I'm going to use the cosine rule here. And obviously the angle is capital A, which means this is little a, which means these are b and c. So I would write that a squared is equal to uh, b squared plus c squared minus two lots of b, c multiplied by cosine of the angle. Okay, let's simplify. That's 25. x plus 1 all squared is x squared plus an x, plus another x, plus 1 times 1 is 1. Um, I know that cosine of 60 is a half, so I'm timesing by a half and I'm timesing by 2, so they will cancel. So this leaves me with 
minus 5 times x plus 1. And minus 5x plus 1 is minus 5 minus, sorry, minus 5x minus 5. So minus 5x minus 5. Okay, I've got an x squared on both sides of the equation, so I can cancel those out. I'm going to get 0 is equal to 25 plus 1 minus 5 is 21. And I've got a 2x minus a 5x, which is a minus 3x. So therefore, 3x equals 21, x equals 7. OK, and now I just need to work out the perimeter, which is k. So I have x is 7, so 7 down here. This is x plus 1, so that's 8. And this is 5. So it's 7 plus 8 plus 5, which is equal to 20 centimeters. Lovely. All right, I hope you found that useful. If you did, please do like the video and then have a go at the next topic. I will see you there. Bye for now.